Let Me Smash, the third novel. Also before we start, I'd like to say rest in peace Obama Chan, you are gone but not forgotten. The year is 2017. Robbie Rotten is still alive and Bio and MJ hadn't quite settled in Neverland yet. The second Vietnam War started just about a year prior, and we are losing, we are getting smashed the hell out of. It all started when Commander called Vietnam gay, for that gay boy named Alex, and so in turn they decided to invade South Africa, where his juicy white ass resides. America and England got involved in the war, but the news of the world didn't cover it cause that's a queen album me fucking dumbass. When the Russians and the Vietnamese finally found his juicy white ass, Commander's brother jumped out into the fucking front lines like Rambo and started shooting up the commies with a fucking serial launcher. Commander's brother preferred to use Cheerios as ammo, but the commies were using fucking Captain Crunch, not just any Captain Crunch, but oops all berries. It is more flavor than typical Cheerios and really gets you in the mood to smash post-war, but that's besides the point you fucking ho. News of this war reached as far out as Duloc where Donkey and Shrek resided. Fairy tale creatures were seen as expendable cuss they're not fucking real, and so you better bet your ass donkey got enlisted into this war, especially after Salt and Shrek and the original Shrek 64. On the other side of the world here I was, Ron, trying to get smashed with the girl of my dreams, Paige, I meant fucking Becky, with being the bird and all I would harass her like humongous until she filed a restraining order on me. Thing was, I had to be at least 8,500 miles away from her, and so I was forced to move to South Africa. Nobody told me about the fucking war, and so when the ferry arrived I had to get cover almost immediately cause someone started shooting Kellogg's Crunch at me with a Gatlin gun. Turns out though, Commander was taking cover in the same spot and we were surrounded by those damn fairy tale creatures. His brother was on lunch break smashing some mashed potatoes and so me and Commander's juicy white ass were kinda stuck together in this tight spot. We figured if we were gonna be camping out here for a while we might as well smash, and so we did, but I'm not a dumbass so I wore used Conker's bad fur day condom. I mean yeah the condom was used and cost about $2000, but it was worth it no cuss Commander and I had to abort the baby about a month later. Being we didn't want to copy MJ and Bio who were having baby smash in about 9 months. See the thing is we had to camp there like a fucking noob in Apex and so we had no choice but to abort the baby cause it was literally just a fucking pack of instant oatmeal and it was just the original flavor so it's not like it was that great of a loss. When the starvation seemed like it was finally gonna get to us cause we didn't have any clean water to add to the oatmeal cause this is fucking total Africa. Donkey came in on an Apache helicopter and gunned down the remaining fairy tale creatures who kept spamming frags on the pit even though it was swords only. I mean this is before 343 patch MCC so what do you expect, and Halo 3 was gonna be added to the backwards compatibility list later in the year and so everyone was on MCC again. Well except for Ben because one, he didn't exist yet, and two, Ben is a hoe. And so after Donkey said I can fly three billion fucking times consecutively, I decided to dip and become a kindergarten teacher before I could become drafted into this hellish war. Thing was I was actually having a hallucination due to starvation and Donkey was still spamming that I can fly BLJ on the Bowser's staircase. I decided to find Commander's brother and smash his leftover mashed potatoes after begging him to let me mash but he only agreed to because I was hella thick back then and wanted to come for that big bird booty, I thought smash for a mash was a good trade off and he also had to use Conker's bad fur day condom of his own, so it was hard to resist. And so after me, Commander, and his brother got three way in a very nice hotel, we decided to see if Donkey had got up the endless stairs yet and found that he was gone, he left a note saying BRB. Went to go smash that dragon ass custom fairy tale creatures be trying to diss my fly girl and so I'm a go 1v1 perfect dark there ass. In that moment we thought we had a glimmer of hope cause we had a nick at the unaddicted donkey, but things were about to get a lot worse. We had a rude awakening the next day to the sound of what looked like a covenant cruiser glass in reach, but the thing was the covenant weren't gonna invade earth for another 500 years. But the question was, who the hell was glass in Africa at 6 in the fucking morning?
We heard the screams of various fairy tale creatures in agony as well as some other people, but those African natives had that fucking bubble shield on and so not even the depressing ass rain hurt them. Just then, we noticed Donkey running, like the coward he was, from a fucking giant mutant peacock holding an energy sword. The peacock was about to lunge but didn't quite have that red circle on him, but also at the same time, Commander's brother jumped out like Halo 3 with the gravity turned off and met one of those Rambo faces. As the peacock lunged with his electric cock, Commander's brother cock blocked the peacock, but doing a Halo 2 sword cancel in front of Donkey, effectively saving the ass's ass from the peacock's electric cock. Unfortunately though, Commander's brother felt the full wrath of the peacock's electric cock in his ass, feeling hairspray but halt here. The blood started dripping from Commander's brother's juicy white ass. It was obvious he was gonna die of internal bleeding, so we had to flee before those damn peacocks got any bright ideas, and unfortunately we had to leave Commander's brother behind. Spoiler alert, he comes back after the microwave genie grants Commander a wish later on. As we were running, the rain made me kinda horny and made my cock hard, but then I realized it was hailing and so the rain was hard too. Those rain clouds started looking hella thick, and so I smashed a rain cloud. After I was done smashing the rain cloud, I checked to see if Donkey and Commander were still following me to see a big ass red beam. We ran, and found a fallout shelter and then camped there until those bitch ass peacocks went away, who knows, they probably got glassed by the beam. Anyways we finally got out of the shelter and saw the whole continent was glassed. They say don't throw stones in glass houses so I threw a rock at the ground and the whole fucking continent shattered. Just kidding, but on the side note, the whole continent was burnt and glassed, and like a dumbass, I sat down and got glass in my ass. We saw a hillbilly jeep balls deep in a fried bog, and sent a donkey to haul it out of the bog. Afterwards, we went to a burnt down convenience store and I asked Commander why the hell he was dressed like a Mexican. He claimed he wanted to smash a Mexican slut, but I told him that, this is Africa you dumbass, give me the real reason. And so he explained he wanted to get out of his dirty ass clothes and thought he would blend in with the environment. You should probably get some new clothes too, cause you smell like ass yourself wrong. I found the clothes of what looked like a kindergarten teacher's clothes. I looked like a drag queen with the clothes on, and Donkey wasn't helping saying that I looked like shit, but just then we saw some silhouettes talking by a curving up cruiser and so Donkey decided to check it out. It was only the cardboard cutouts of some fairy tale creatures though. It seemed fishy that there were some random ass cardboard cutouts with speakers out in the middle of nowhere, I sensed that it was a trap, but at the same time, Donkey taped a picture of his wife on the cutout and started fucking it. I saw a pair of eyes over the hill with a Vietnamese sniper and told everyone to take cover, it was a peacock zealot. Donkey didn't listen to my warning and got shot in the fucking eye, and started crying like a little bitch, Commander conveniently had neosperm and started rubbing it in his eye. But I was getting sick of this shit and threw a rock at the zealot, killing him. He conveniently had an eye patch and so I gave that to Donkey who was still crying. It's not even that bad of the wound. I said, it's only a Chinese knockoff Captain Crunch bullet. You're not even bleeding, but your eye looks like it's infected with something from the bullet so maybe you should keep the eye patch on. Besides, all the bitches wanna smash a pirate, and look at you, black beard ain't got shit on you. We decided that before the peacocks could notice their zealot wasn't responding we needed to hide in the park cruiser. We opened the door and started exploring the ship. Although Donkey ran to the nearest bathroom to take a mean shit. The ship was empty, but we heard an echo through the halls of the ship, sounding like a moan of agony. As we inched closer to the moan, it became more apparent the sound was coming from a machine, more specifically a phone, an android phone, cause it was obvious the sound quality was shit, then it was obvious that somebody was watching X videos. We suddenly heard the owner of the phone say, damn it. The Wi-Fi in Africa is shit. Commander said, wait, I recognized it voice, it sounds like the gay electrical socket, I thought he died in the first one. The voice suddenly responded, no, I just used the power of the microwave genie to survive, you see, 
even though you thought we both died, we actually were in critical condition as well. The ship started to fly as he monologued. You see, our welfare checks would only pay off for a day in the hospital, so I made a bargain with the microwave genie to grant me my one wish, and since I am not a dumbass, I just asked for infinite wishes, the microwave genie needed to comply, so I wished for us to be healthy first off. After that I began plotting my revenge. You see, after your friend Booty raped my cousin, the microwave genie, I wanted nothing but revenge on all of his friends. I began thinking of any of your friends who could possibly help you out in defeating me, so I wish them all to go to prison in Alcatraz, so don't expect Dr. Phil or Shrek to be helping you out. I then thought of a genius way I could take out all of the rest of your friends one by one without getting arrested, and wish for the microwave genie to start a war between Africa and Vietnam, and frame the commander as the cause of the war, so that he could be taken care of. Although I didn't realize he had a brother who was like Rambo. I didn't want any of Shrek's friends to come looking for him, so I wished that all the fairy tale creatures had to be drafted into this war, which took care of Donkey, but I didn't realize he could do that I can fly BLJ to escape from enemy fire, I started to get pissed off though because I wasn't killing off any of your friends. So I started to get aggressive. I wish for a Covenant cruiser to glass the planet with, and for mutant peacock version of the covenant to come after you guys directly, I told them whoever died was taking part in the great smash and they would make it into Valhalla after they died, and that their names would pass on for countless millennia. Once I saw Commander's brother die, I thought I killed all of you guys off by glass in the area where you were at, but I didn't realize there was a fallout shelter with convenient placement for you to hide in. I celebrated the victory by watching some X videos and was plotting to go after Bio, Blake, Spartan, and MJ next, and now here we are. And now that I have you right where I want you, Bill Cosby, escort these fugitives to their cells. The figure responded saying, hey hey hey, any of you bitches want some pudding pot before you go to bed, cause otherwise you gonna have to spread them, and you gonna learn today. Pushes started turning into shoves and Donkey got scared of how high up we were. Commander, 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 what the hell is it Donkey, he said, I'm looking down, Donkey said, when then stop looking down you dumbass, Commander said, Commander, please, he said, don't let Bill Cosby smash me. Well what the hell am I supposed to do about it, I don't know, he said. All hope seemed lost. Bill Cosby opened up the cell door for us, and locked it behind him saying, I ain't asking to smash you puddin' paws, I'm gonna smash. He began smashing Donkey, and he let out a loud A-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
Bill Cosby then dialed 911 and reported a car crash in the suburban desert. How did you find this? Commander said. Blank smirked and said, that it was easy. I heard about a talking donkey who went a wall and this little ass here fit the description exactly. I saw you guys walking into the ship, and we just decided to wait to save you guys later on for dramatic effect. There was a pause. I got fucking raped by Bill Cosby, Donkey said. Why the hell does this criminal get to run the way a free man? Well that's easy, Blank said, because you're gay, for that gay boy named Alex. I'm married to a fucking dragon. What the hell are you on? I don't know. I saw some mushrooms and they look good. We landed the helicopter to see if there were any survivors, and incidentally we found the only survivors besides us to be the gay electrical Salkin and microwave genie. The cops showed up and started handcuffing us, but then we explained it was them that were responsible for the crash and not us. The cops had handed all of us except Bill Cosby. Thanks for the tip on these two war criminals. The cop said, Big Bill Cosby is coming with us cuss of rape allegations back in America. Now with the three suspects locked up in handcuffs, the cops asked if we had any last words to say to them. Commander stepped out in front and said, Yes I do, actually. Microwave Genie, I wish for you to bring my brother back from the dead, because I love him, and you took him away from him in his prime. The genie was about to respond when the dumbass cop said, yeah but this is the real world, not fairy tale land, and shoved them into the car before Blake and Spartan could wish for anything. The cops slammed the doors and drove off into the midday horizon. Blake broke the silence by saying, damn it, now me and Spartan got to wait until the next novel, before we finally get to have some fun. But where's Preston? Spartan asked. I don't know, maybe he's trying to get back with the Mexican slut. Let's go check to see if he's at a party. And there he was, trying to get smashed with another Mexican slut. Preston, Blank said, why did you just ditch us all like that? Because they're having a Spongebob themed party and all the Mexican sluts are dressed like Spongebob characters. So, Blank said, that's not really a good reason to just ditch your friends like that. I don't know Blake, Preston said, look I don't got much going for me. Just let me have this one thing, just this once. Okay, Blank said, if this is what makes you happy, I won't stop you. The party went on until 3 a.m. with mostly the Spongebob cosplayers fucking everyone, and after that night, we all parted our ways back to the way it was before the war. The war was now over and everyone could move on in their lives, Blank and Spartan went back to America in search of fuck. Preston would go on to become an Amazon employee trying to get fuck at parties for the next two years, although admittedly, it was a step up from his previous job working in the rice fields, he'll probably go to college soon though. After the war, Becca decided to revoke the restraining order on me cause I was seen as a war hero back at home, and even offered for the fuck that I've always wanted from her, but I had to resist for the time being because I wasn't ready for kids yet. And I also thought that maybe she wasn't the right one for me. Meanwhile, I decided to move into Neverland Ranch with Bio and MJ, and started going to college in pursuit of that teaching degree I always wanted. I ended up getting a degree after the events of Bio's epilogue about two years later. Commander and his brother went into hibernation for about a year but show up periodically every now and then. Donkey and the rest of the fairy tale creatures went back to Shrek Swamp and the log. Shrek himself after the events of Bio's epilogue went on back to the log, where the events of Shrek 64 2 take place, and as for Dominic, oh wait, I wasn't supposed to mention him, alright, pack your bags, the whole fucking series is cancelled.